In this week's video, we'll review several misconceptions about bull and bear markets, including a review of the present day facts relative to the pervasive stocks can't keep going up mindset. To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. This is an updated version of our 30, 40, and 50 week for illustrative purposes only. Moving averages in blue, red, and green. This weekly chart is as of October 5th, 2017. We had our long sideways consolidation period. We still have a bullish breakout. This chart looks healthy. And we know from past videos that market fractals tell us if consolidation in a one, two, three, four, five year period is relevant, then if we back even further out and look at a monthly version of the same NYSE composite index, but this time dating all the way back to 1992, we can see the low in November of 2016 was actually 1% below this peak here in October of 2007, which basically says the market went nowhere between October of 2007 and the low of November 2016. And even using this larger market fractal, we still have what appears to be a healthy bullish breakout. And since market fractals tell us that these principles would also apply to an even longer time frame. If we look at the view from 60,000 feet, this is the same NYSE monthly chart. This time we're going all the way back to calendar year 1965. We can see the consolidation box that we have in the present day is very, very similar to the consolidation box down here. Came off of a low, went up to the top of the box at point A. Came off of a low, went up to the top of the box at point A. Went down to the bottom of the box at point B bottom of the box at point B. We rallied and then pulled back to a point C, rallied then pulled back to a point C. From point C, we rallied strongly near point D, near point D here. And then we retested this bullish breakout here at point E, which is very, very similar to what happened here. This is a retest. This looks like a failed breakout, but turns out to be a successful breakout after this retest. The right side of the chart is the present day or October 3rd, 2017. This period of indecisiveness here lasted 20 years. This box here covers an 18 year period. And we know the longer a market goes sideways, the bigger the move that we can expect to get. And in this case, when the bullish breakout was apparent in the early 1980s, after breaking out of the box, the stock market rallied from this point here for 19 additional years and tacked on an additional 945%. Since this point E here is similar to the pullback or this point E here, this tells us to keep an open mind about the possibility of much better than expected outcomes looking out several years. This sideways consolidation here is an example of a larger market fractal relative to the expression, the market needs to consolidate its gains. We typically get strong rallies followed by periods of sideways indecisiveness or consolidation, which is summed up nicely from this quote from the book Trend Following. A move, a move, followed by a sideways range. Here's our move, followed by a sideways range. Often precedes another move, over here, of almost equal extent in the same direction as the original move. A move, followed by a sideways range, often precedes another move. That would be in this direction here of almost equal extent in the same direction as the original move. Once again, the basic premise is telling us to keep an open mind. We're not forecasting here. We're looking at hard data. These are charts that we can see 
measure and put in a model. It simply tells us to be open to much better than expected outcomes for a very long period of time. As always, we're not forecasting here. We'll take it day by day. In early October of 2017, a common concern is that stocks have gone up for a very long period of time. This is a major low here. This is a rally that lasted over eight years, which brings us to our first myth buster. What does market history tell us about this common 2017 perception relative to the stock market? Stocks have been going up for eight years. They can't keep going up. At face value, that seems logical. However, the chart that we were just looking at isn't the present day. This is an eight-year rally here off of a major low that started late in 1974 and carried into early 1983. So if we take the exact same eight-year chart, put it in a smaller form and box it up with a purple box, and move it to the chart that we were looking at previously, we can see that in this example here, this purple box is the same exact period shown via this purple box. Prior to this 19 year, 945% move in the MYSE composite index, the index had already gone up for over eight years from this major low here to this point here, which is very, very similar to this major low here. From this point here to this point here in the present day is over eight years. This purple box here is the exact same period shown by this purple box here. This purple box is very, very similar to this purple box, telling us that point F here at the top of the purple box is similar to the present day on October 3rd, 2017. How much longer did the rally last? Remember, at point F here, in the early 1980s, we could have said stocks have been going up for eight years. They can't keep going up. Stocks have been going up for eight years. They can't keep going up. Well, what happened was from point F here, stocks rallied for an additional 18 years on top of the eight year plus rally off of this low. After rallying for eight years, stocks tacked on an additional gain of 620% over that 18 year period. Tying it all together, this eight year move here is identical to this eight year move here. This chart is this chart here. This is 1974, this is 1974. This is 1983, this is 1983. And this move in red is very, very similar to this move here off of this major low. Not forecasting anything here. What we're saying is, when we ask the question, is it possible for stocks to continue to go up for years after rallying for eight years off of a major low and coming outside of a long-term consolidation box? similar to the present day at point F. History tells us the answer to that question, is it possible? The answer is absolutely, positively yes. Stocks could rally for a long, long time. It's within the realm of possibility and passes historical muster. We have two more common misconceptions to cover. Given the markets are currently doing well, it'd be very, very possible to hear something like this. The big picture and charts are irrelevant if I follow a disciplined, low-cost, passive strategy using an S&P 500 index fund or ETF over any 10-year period. In a nutshell, if I keep my costs down and I'm disciplined, I should be fine over any 10-year period. Historically, in many instances, this is true. However, what happens if the exception to the rule is the day that you retire. Let's assume no matter how I accumulated a million dollars. So what happens on the left side here is irrelevant. I could have invested 
for 30 years and accumulated a million dollars, or I could have won the lottery yesterday and accumulated a million dollars. The left side here is irrelevant mathematically. If we start with a million dollars here and basically said, if I use the Vanguard Index 500 fund and I hold it for any 10 year period, I should be fine. The green line shows buy and hold Vanguard Index 500 fund, VFINX in the mutual fund world. If I invested a million dollars on September 1st of 2000 and held it for over 11 years, my million dollar investment from September 1st of 2000 would have been wildly volatile. And 11.33 years later, and this includes reinvesting dividends, would have scratched and clawed its way back to my original investment of a million dollars. The point of the exercise, understanding the big picture, even over 10 year, 11 year periods, and in some cases, 25 year periods historically can be very, very helpful. The blue line shows just consistent growth at 6.5%. After 11.33 years, the low cost S&P 500 index investors investment was basically back to break even in a boring strategy that focused more on the miracle of compounding and protecting principal during downturns was worth over twice as much after 11.33 years, a little over 2 million. Remember, it doesn't matter how I get to a million here. If I had a million dollars at age 65, in this case, at age 76, my investment basically would have made zero progress. If you prefer to see numbers, million dollar investment basically at break even 6.2 years after making it, million dollar investment in a low cost passive indexing strategy, basically back to break even 7.8 years after making the investment, a million dollar investment back to break even the exact same place 11.3 years later. Focusing on the miracle of compounding and consistent returns can be very, very, very powerful. Same million dollars invested on September 1st, 2000, growing at what appears to be a very boring 6.5% instead of being worth $998,000 on December 20th, 2011, it was worth a little over 2 million. Once again, hammering home the benefits of consistency and having a strategy for periods that are marked by the potential for large drawdowns. This investor starts, gets hit with a huge drawdown. They rally for years, get hit with another huge drawdown, rally for years, and just scratch and claw their way back to break even data that we have in front of us now looks constructive, but an example like this hammers home the need for maximum flexibility. In October of 2017, this is a very, very constructive looking breakout. This is the value line geometric index. Regular viewers and clients know this is an excellent way to track a typical stock. It's an equally weighted, very, very broad stock index. It's basically gone nowhere since 1998. Hit a peak here, came back to the same peak early in 2017, and just now in October of 2017, is trying to break out of a massive consolidation pattern. Maximum flexibility tells us that we have to be open to the possibility of a failed breakout, even though the data that we have in hand right now the weight of the evidence points to a movement in this direction, we will continue to take it day by day. If the data changes, then the probabilities will change. And if the data changes in a material way, we will make an incremental adjustment. The data continues to be constructive. 
we will err on the side of staying invested and leaving it alone. This is the same 30, 40, and 50 week moving averages. This is the low probability look that we want to avoid. This is late in calendar year 2000. After we could see this, measure it, put it in a model, we didn't have to forecast or predict anything. The S&P 500 lost an additional 47%. Similar situation in the financial crisis. We have our full bore bearish look here with blue, the fastest moving average on the bottom and the slopes of all of the moving averages are rolling over and prices below the moving averages. After I could see this measure it, put it in a model, the S&P 500 lost an additional 52%. As the exact same chart look in October of 2017. It looks constructive. We will continue to take it day by day. The look of this chart here aligns with this bullish breakout here and tells us to keep an open mind about this being a successful bullish breakout and stocks moving in this direction. When we see drawdowns in the S&P 500, somewhere in the order of 50% that occurred after the 2000 peak and 2007 peak, we might be inclined to say something like this. My growth strategy is well diversified. Or more specifically, if I have a diversified basket of stock-based ETFs, including exposure to large caps, mid caps, small cap, foreign, emerging markets, and technology, the big picture and all these charts really doesn't matter if I hold my pie chart diversified strategy for many years. Which leads to a logical question. How much real world diversification does a mix of ETFs or mutual funds provide in a crisis or bear market? We've covered this in the past. This allocation that we tested was represented as the quintessential equity portfolio mix, providing enormous diversification. And it does appear to be enormously diversified. Large cap blend value, small cap blend value, REITs, Foreign stocks blend, foreign value, foreign small and mid cap growth, foreign small and mid cap value in emerging markets. It's about as diversified as you can get for a long term growth strategy. And in order to implement a strategy like this properly, you have to hold for the long haul. How difficult was it to hold this allocation and did this pie chart provide diversification? during the financial crisis? Did it make it easier to sleep at night having a pie chart? More specifically, how far did this allocation fall in the financial crisis? From peak to trough, this diversified allocation lost 59% from October of 2007 through early March of 2009. And in fact, the pie chart strategy actually performed a little bit worse than holding SPY over the same period. Buy and hold from peak to trough lost 59.17%. SPY or the S&P 500 lost a little bit less, 55%. Therefore, if I had a pie chart and I held it during the financial crisis and I invested a million dollars in that pie chart, it would have dropped to $405,000 before bottoming in 2009. History tells us buy and hold works. The question is, can we sleep at night with these type of drawdowns? And will we be able to hold through this type of drawdown? Or will we think the diversification's not working? It's time to bail. To summarize the facts that we have in hand as of early October, 2017, still look constructive. However, in order to maintain that wildly important, flexible, unbiased, and open mind, it's extremely important that we understand and respect that very, very bad things can happen in the stock market. And in order to capture gains, it's also extremely important to understand that very, very good things can happen in the stock market things that are beyond your wildest dreams, like an 18 year rally that sees the average stock go up 
620% after an eight-year rally off of a major low. So how does all of this help us and how do we use it? We'll take it day by day, week by week, and month by month. We will continue to collect the latest data, run it through the model, and ask ourselves, based on the facts in hand right now, are we allocated properly? The answer has been and continues to be yes. It's important that we repeat that process going forward with an open, unbiased, and flexible mind. If the data starts to deteriorate, eventually the answer to the question will be no, and we'll make an incremental adjustment. And in order for all of it to work properly, all of our decisions have to be made based on what's in front of us, not what we think may or may not happen in the future. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time? The sub-models, we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The sub-models allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile, and the master CCM market model then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currencies, or any number of investment options. If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website, follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog short takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.